Welcome participants to my NPTEL MOOC module on exploring healthcare survey data. We are uh, in, on the week uh, exploring influential statistics in healthcare. In the previous lecture, we discussed about uh, regression models using the quantitative dependent variables. Here we are uh, you know tending towards explaining uh, the dependent variable which is you know qualitative. Uh, so, the regression models are not usual, U usually these models are also referred as you know some generalized form of uh, you know least square model. Okay. So, we will discuss all those things now without uh, consuming more time. Regression models that we have uh, discussed so far implicitly assumed that the dependent variable y is quantitative, whereas the explanatory variable can take either form of variables may, may be a mixture or may be you know all quantity may be all qualitative. Many economic or social phenomena of interest however concern variables that are not continuous or perhaps not even quantitative. But in this lecture we will discuss analysis of model when dependent variable itself is in qualitative nature. You can just refer with this example for your own, own understanding. Uh, when uh, the dependent variable is quantitative, the objective of a regression you know, model is to estimate its expected or mean value given the values of the regressors. When uh, the, the dependent variable that is y is qualitative, the objective of the model is to find the probability of something happening. Qualitative response regression models are often known as probability models. Okay? The types of dependent variables and their estimation methods. You know, we have made a comparison, and you can understand very clearly what methods and what context is usually applied. If your dependent variable is continuous, that is quantitative in nature, and independent variable may be you know mixed or in any of the one qualitative or quantitative, you are supposed to apply the OLS um, regression model. When your dependent variable is binary but qualitative binary. In uh, independent variable may be of mixed kind, you are supposed to apply you know a linear probability model, logit model, or probit model. Uh, there are there might be you no know, uh, not necessarily you know the dependent variable to be binary, it might be categorical. If it is qual uh, categorical, usually discusses qualitative uh, data, uh, irrespective of the independent variables, multinomial logit uh, regression is applied. Uh, if your uh, you know dependent variable is ordered, ordered categorical but ordered, you know like education is the variable, educational attainment. Um, in that case, you are supposed to apply cumulative you know logit model or cumulative probit model. These are called cumulative models. Uh, if your data uh, that is dependent variable is binary but repeated binary, you know uh, your uh, re responses are in fact repeated. In that case, uh, you know, as we already uh, discussed from the beginning of the data, that you know, panel logit or probit is applied, since you know, data is a kind of longitudinal or a kind of repeated one, irrespective of the kind of independent variable you carry. Uh, so, first, first of all, we will discuss uh, from the starting on binary choice models. Uh, you know, I am not discussing all the things in detail, I will just discuss you the you know base overview of the theory from the beginning in, uh, then I will suggest you to you know go through my previous you know lecture. Uh, last year I floated, this year also that is running that is on you know um, exploring uh, that is on handling large scale data set okay? uh, that is all, all also of um, 8 credit. Uh, you will get the detailed guidance and their practical applications as well. So, at this moment I am just clarifying if it is a binary choice model, the choice function is binary uh, that is you know y uh, if it is linearized with you know beta naught, beta 1 x plus epsilon the expected value of y is, is in fact defined as beta naught plus beta 1 x uh, with the assumption that the estimated or expected value of the error term is equal to 0. The response variable y can take only two values for say binary as 1, uh, if it is you know attribute is present else it is 0. Uh, that is why the regression y is called binary or dichotomous variable which we just said. Uh, so, it has a probability uh, with the distribution called Bernoulli distribution. So, when we have a binary you know responses, uh, the distribution it follows called Bernoulli distribution 
with p is equal to you know p is equal to 1 that is small p and then p if it is equal if the dependent variable is with y equal to 0 then other that is 1 minus p is the answer. Okay. By the definition of the expected value of the random variable expected y so therefore would be equal to 1 times you know p i plus 0 that is 1 0 0 times 1 minus p i. So, 1 minus p i is the probability of you know 0 as the occurrence you know p i is the you know probability of 1 is the occurrence. So, finally, the expected value of the dependent variable is nothing but the probabilities. Okay. The mean response is inter inter interpreted as the probability of success that is y equal to 1 when the independent variable takes on the values of x. There are four approaches to develop a probability model for the binary response kind of variables. Uh, broadly they are discussed as LPM linear probability model, the logit model, probit model and tobit model. Linear probability model uh, or LPM uh, that you know you have to refer the book also to my previous uh, mo model um, previous, previous module as I already suggested you know it has you know um, some linearity in its, its, its in its responses where the ordinary least square method is actually applied ok. So, well this is applied the LPM predicts the probability of an event occurring and uh, like other linear models says that you know the effects of x i on the probabilities are in fact linear. Uh, we are just explaining here uh, the you know model as we already explained I am not going to repeat I am just explaining the uh, information given in the table. The probability distribution of the error term uh, is, is equal to you know if y is equal to 1 and that is dependent variable is equal to 1 the probabilities are in fact called p i otherwise if it is 0 the probability is 1 minus p i. So, what is the expected probabilities then 1 times uh, p i uh, if one, 1 is the occurrence in, in y and 0 times of this. So, the error is basically 1 minus, uh, 1 minus the expected values. So, 1 minus that is expected value we have already mentioned that this one 1 minus uh, the expected value uh, 1 y 1 since you know y i is 1. So, 1 minus this one is the error term in case of the 1 value of y and uh, you know otherwise 0 minus this. So, this is the expected value of the error term. Okay. Therefore, the uh, expected y is, is, is equal to 1 times p i plus 0 times 1 minus p i equal to p i which is uh, equal to you know uh, y i uh, the expected value of this one uh, for each of the uh, you know expected value of the error term uh, which is assumed to be 0. So, LPM uh, you know uh, and, and the, the, the practical in data were also explained uh, in, in my previous model. Um, uh, you know, for this purpose we are using a sample of NSA 75th round data on healthcare. Uh, this is the difference you know as compared to my last year you know um, uh, module uh, uh, on the previous module on handling large scale you know data using stata. Uh, this year we have included uh, the NSA 75th round on healthcare data. Uh, we are interested in knowing what factors affecting the nature of treatment that is traditional versus modern uh, during uh, the, the case of ailment. Okay, if the element uh, element person is, is reporting access to some forms of you know, um, medicines, now medicinal treatment or nature of treatment, those are traditional or modern. So we have uh, categorized into two. The dependent variable here is a dummy one, that is yes or no. Okay, uh, a mixture of qualitative and quantitative variables are used as as the regressors. So here are the dependent and independent variables. So, dependent variables we have just defined as 1 is for modern medicine, 0 is for traditional medicine and the independent variable we have taken for uh, explanation we have already discussed about independent variables in our regression model in the previous you know lecture. Here we have to consider some continuous variables, some dummy variables, some categorical variables you can read between these you know lines okay, for your better understanding. So, the estimation of LPM using OLS, simple OLS is technique is taken. So, as we know that OLS is applied when you have you know uh, when you you know is, is OLS result is derived when you have simply apply the command called regress. Okay. So, simple uh, regress 
with the first uh, you know variable that is the dependent variable followed by followed by the independent variable some i dot commands are given we have already explained that i dot commands are, 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 are assigned or, or, or added just to identify whether that variable is in fact categorical or not okay whether this has considered any base category for for comparison and its impact on um, in the the uh, medicine on the uh, no, choice of um, treatment so um, this is what is 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 made we'll also do our practical at the end okay now i'm just clar clarifying each of the concept and you can also run like this using the practice data set that is going to be uploaded uh, the shortcomings of this lpm is that the distribution that has been considered is is not normal okay because it is following a bernoulli distribution with 1 and 0 so it is not normal so it is not avoiding uh, not you know uh, the errors are not estimated to be zero, okay? So errors are basi basically heteroscedastic. That is important. You may be asked the question: if the distribution is not normal, okay, then what would be the error distribution? Does it have you know homoscedasticity uh, uh, or heteroscedasticity? Whether it, it it violates or not. Similarly, nonlinearity aspect is also identified since you know the, the data is, is not you know following a linear pattern uh, questionable values of r square of course because since your uh, you know um, distribution is not normal so the goodness of heat is, is in question okay the condition that uh, dependent variable to lie between 0 and 1 is in fact violated okay so the 0 and 1 that we have said may not be actually um, you know may not be actually derived correctly. Okay. So, rest uh, I have already explained in my previous model you can just follow. Uh, now, coming to other two important and widely applied you know regression models in this context is called logit and Frobit regression models. LPM assumes uh, with you know 1 and 0 uh, you know p i is equal to expected value of y uh, if it is 1 given the you know conditional values uh, you know increases. Uh, when that PI increases linearly with x that means the marginal or incremental effect of x remains constant throughout. But in reality one would expect that PI is non-linearly related to the uh, you know regressors. So, we need a probability model that characterize uh, the xi uh, you know uh, with the PI values but never fall beyond the range of 0 and 1 the relations between p i and x i is non-linear. Models with such characteristics are called logit uh, and probit if you know normal distribution uh, in case if normal distribution uh, is followed probit model is also called normit uh, model, normit distribution model and here, here it is called logistic distribution models. Both theoretical and empirical considerations suggest that when the dependent variable is a binary one the shape of the you know response function will frequently curve very near okay uh, the logit and uh, probit function follows the sigmoid curve sigmoid you might be asked a question that you know which distribution it, it follows in lpm we have already said that that is uh, following a bernoulli distribution here it is a shaped a sigmoid curve the logit model follows cumulative logistic you know distribution function again you know uh, the uh, the the curve that is uh, explained is called cumulative you know logistic distribution function the probit model follows standard normal cumulative density function okay that is the difference between logit and probit standard normal cumulative density function where in case of logit it is called cumulative logistic distribution function the parameters of interest in logit and probit can be estimated through maximum light likelihood estimate method. I think you might have heard about you know uh, different uh, a, a estimator uh, you know one uh, is called uh, you know ordinarily square least square method another method is called you know uh, maximum likelihood method. What is the likelihood of uh, being included in, in, in that particular uh, model? The maximum likelihood estimator of beta is the particular vector that, that is also written as you know estimated value beta hat you know ml that gives the greatest likelihood of observing uh, the sample uh, conditional on the explanatory variables. 
this is what it looks like this is a S shaped curve or called sigmoid curve ok S shaped curve. Uh, so, this is a kind of you know uh, logistic you know um, map. The so, logistic model have certain assumptions that you know it does not require a linear relationship between the dependent and independent variable. That is why we said you know if uh, OLS is, is violated then we, we may go for you know some forms of non-linear non model, but again you know these are called transform linear model, these are also called generalized forms of model, they are also called GLM, some you know cases of GLM. We will explain this uh, you know to some extent in one of the modules, one of the lectures. The residuals do not need to be normally distributed, okay. It is it's, 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 it's distribution is S shaped, it is sigmoid kind, so not necessarily following a normally distributed one. This is quite important to note. The logistic regression requires the observations to be independent of each other, okay. Uh, it should, should not come from repeated measurement or mass, mass data. This assumes that the independent variables are linear related to the log of odds. If the odds are you know uh, taken as log that means the distribution is comes out to be linear ok. So, we will show that also in, in our derivation. Logistic regression typically requires large sample data that, that has to be understood. Here is the model when we take you know log of this one uh, basically you know you just go through this I have explained very uh, clearly in my previous module on handling large data. This is the logistic function. Okay, it has you know the you know um, um, expected value uh, the the you know um, uh, exponential values Ex exponential open the uh, you know um, standard normal distribution but it is exponentiated so um, uh, then um, uh, exponentiated then another one uh, actually you know the function is in fact presented like this okay and its probability and its you know odd of, of the probabilities or 1 minus pi is represented here. Finally, the logit is actually called the transformation of the function of pi to that of 1 minus pi this is also called odd ratio ok. Uh, this is when we take log of all those things we are finally getting a linear function. So, the log of the odd is nothing but the OLS ok, nothing but in fact the 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 you know uh, linear regression model. So, it is visible from the function that the j i is ranging from minus you know infinite to plus infinite ok that you can just read between the line. So, log it that is basically log of odd ratio is not linear in x, but also linear in the parameter the way we discuss in the assumption of OLS regression. So, linear with the parameter not linear with the variables ok. So, uh, uh, the ordinary least square method are not applied when you have this kind of function. So, so then, then I think all are explained. Whenever you derive logit uh, model, it is always suggested to derive marginal effects because you know logit is, is, is not uh, having with the you know uh, continuous variables. So, uh, by uh, ordinary least uh, square regression, we get all marginal you know changes. Uh, marginal effect of each uh, conditional variable or uh, co control variables on its dependent variable. But since in, in logit it is a sporadic change from 1 to 0 ok, it, it follows uh, uh, you know a path different than that of a continuous since the dependent variable is not continuous we are supposed to you know further take the marginal effect ok. So, um, <clears throat> so, marginal effect basically the derivative again is, is taken like this ok. So, d p by d x and you can just follow between the lines and um, how it is interpreted. Next one is called probit regression model, probit regression model uh, the this does not require a linear relationship between the dependent and independent variables. Probit model the error term is normally distributed that is most important but in case of logit it is not normally distributed. So, the probability function is y is equal to 1 given x though in short it is uh, this cumulative frequencies are uh, written as x beta rest of the detail uh, the is, is given here this is the distribution follows as CDF cumulative distribution function ok 
and uh, <coughs> the probabilities in this case uh, are, are defined um, you know we have already said that it should follow its error distribution to be normally distributed okay and the probabilities uh, having you know greater than 0 values uh, you know given different uh, y is greater than 0 values given uh, different control variables uh, it, it suggested that you know p is equal to y that is equal to 1 given x should equal to the probability of the error distribution and the error distribution should be at least greater than that of its you know estimated values okay uh, so uh, so, this is how it is defined you can just follow it therefore, the probabilities will be presented with this range. Now, uh, accordingly we arrive into the density function you can just uh, see it once how density function is, is, is defined it, it is basically you know defined as symmetry ok the, uh, therefore, the error distribution is defined to be normal ok. Uh, so, it, it follows the normal distribution with this function. So, we know that normal distribution that varies from minus infinite to the estimated value of uh, the, 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 the beta uh, 1 of 1 upon you know square root of 2 pi uh, times you know it is its exponential value of the z value or t values here with its marginal changes. So, t is the uh, standard you know normal variable. Uh, with the function is you know um, uh, varies from 0 with uh, 0 mean and sigma square standard deviation a uh, sigma square as the variance. Now, we can obtain the information and probabilities you know rest you just can follow I will come to the practical aspect of it. Similarly, uh, since it has you know probabilities and its extreme values with 1 and 0 uh, it is always suggested to go for marginal effect. So, again we take the de derivative of the probabilities function with uh, respect to its x and uh, accordingly it is interpreted. Now, it is important to know the difference between logit and probit neither the logit model nor the uh, probit model are linear which makes things difficult to make the model linear transformations are taken. Okay, usually log transformation is taken. The main difference between the two models is that logic distribution has slightly fatter tails the tails are more fatter whereas, in case of uh, the, the conditional probability p, p the conditional probability is p i approaches uh, if a 0 or 1 at a uh, slower rate in logit. So, in probit model we will have you know f, uh, more fatter tails but in case of logit it has you know slower uh, rate ok. Uh, no I think I have said in a little uh, differently I will show it uh, you know here maybe I think in my previous model I have said let me uh, show you one second yes the logistic distribution uh, would have the tail should be more fatter ok. Whereas, uh, you know in, in, in case of uh, probit it is, is more uh, it is less fatter. Okay. Another difference is, the, is when the error term follows logistic distribution function logit is you know more appropriate whereas, you know when uh, the error distribution is normal or uh, normally distributed cumulative density function is normal then probability is most appropriate. These two points are quite important. Now, some cautions uh, for comparing models I have said you know uh, in earlier models how these are estimated what are how, what are the comparison uh, points uh, beta value in case of logit is 4 times of the beta value of you know the uh, LPM model linear probability model. Uh, beta value in probit is you know 0 0.625 times of its logit similarly other values you can just compare and um, for your record these are already estimated and made the comparison. Okay, so, now we are going to operate uh, with our practical example that we have taken the NSA 7 fifth round data and we will also explain you. Okay. So, here is your data uh, we are going to open the data on your screen the sample data that we are also going to you know share with you these are the MOS data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9 of NSA 7 fifth um, already the fine tuned data uh, after merging. Now, we will also open the do file, do file we have made just for your reference you know you can uh, we have already discussed several times about uh, how to develop a do file and how it helps a lot in, in running the model. 
So, we will first regress why regress is required because you know if you regress with the limited dependent variable that is dependent variable is categorical uh, the result we are deriving is basically called LPM. Okay. First one we will uh, regress the LPM result on your screen. Okay. So, that is simply taking uh, the command as we take in OLS regression. So, here on the screen this is the, uh, the one. Okay, so, this gives the result of the LPM okay, since our dependent variable is limited. Now, we are again uh, explaining uh, another one uh, logit. Okay. Well, logit, but you know another aspect is uh, we are giving conditional logit. Conditional logit xi command is given on the next uh, do, do file command we have mentioned as you know xi. xi command is basically uh, giving you some conditional information about its uh, you know about its reference categories. Okay. So, now we are just running it over here the result is on your screen. Now, this is you know derived okay. it is here. Uh, so, um, we have derived the logit with its conditional variables like for example, you know the conditional you can just read uh, here sector uh, sector on uh, 2. So, 1 is rural and 2 is urban what is the interpretation of it? the uh, you know, coefficient is, is, is given not the odd ratio you should uh, note it very clearly these are not odd ratio these are simply called coefficient and its significance value is, is given as p values p values column are there. So, it says that the probability of uh, the, the, the likelihood of, uh, of the uh, patients or the persons with ailment located in urban areas okay, are less uh, are, are more likely to access you know uh, you know modern medicines okay so 0 and 1 we have taken so uh, 0 and 1 in our dependent variable traditional versus modern so uh, so uh, similarly you can also follow other so second one is female as compared to male then public versus private etc rest of the details you can find from our paper the paper link we already uh, shared to you earlier now we are also uh, trying to give you know uh, logit estimation okay with its uh, simple you know uh, uh, this is uh, simple logist logistic regression you know equation is it's, it's you can also uh, derive and find out here uh, this is result is is displayed so basically you know simple one you know it it it, it takes the average without having um, uh, like you know look at the, the here when you have uh, I, I, let me tell you the command here logistic uh, logistic regression when you give logit it gives you the coefficient when you take logistic command it gives you the odd ratio. Okay. So, here is the odd ratio on the first column of the result is your odd ratio. So, odd ratio if it is greater than 1 that means your uh, result is in favor if it is less than 1 it is against. Okay. So, like p and 1 minus p and whether they are significant or not you can interpret accordingly. So, then uh, we will have you know uh, margin command as well. Okay. So, uh, margin uh, at, at means after running the uh, you know uh, logit logit model when you run you know lo 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 logit you know uh, uh, command you are getting you know uh, coefficient not the odd ratio. But when you have the, uh, applied the command with logistic, you have got the uh, odd ratio. In case odd ratio, uh, no margin effect is required. Okay, if you have got the uh, you know value as coefficient, you have to run the margin command. That has to be interpreted better. So once again, we'll run the logit and show you uh, followed by its margin effect. Xi command. Once we have taken Xi logit, okay. So we are just operating it over here that I can show it to you how it, 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 it works. So, this is in fact our coefficient values this is what is the logit uh, no command. Now, followed by that we will run the margin margin command margin with dy by dx you know uh, and at, at means. Okay. So, at means uh, we are deriving the result has already been derived. So, uh, this dy by dx the first row derivative and its value and its significance level is derived. So, the but the interpretation are similar to that of the coefficient, but this gives most appropriate you know uh, values than that of the logit coefficients. So, margin effects has to be derived all right. 
then similarly you can run the probit model uh, probit the the probit coefficient is is here uh, probit uh, and its dependent and independent variable uh, here are the results uh, now uh, probit regression uh, on the top is written uh, the the in the probit regression when you know that your distribution is 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 you know symmetric your distribution uh, cumulative distribution function is is uh, following normal distribution or error distribution normal then probit is most applied okay and uh, you know accordingly we have derived the coefficient when you have we have got the coefficient i already suggested you that you are supposed to run marginal margin probit as well okay so margins we are also deriving here all right when you have got uh, the margin values uh, then you can uh, check uh, over here uh, i think uh, we haven't uh, we will run it once again and the result is on your screen okay so margin it means is already uh, derived okay and uh, another interesting part in probability is that you know you can predict since you have probabilities so prediction uh, of the you know variables are, are possible you can predict for a uh, different time so uh, first we'll draw the logit uh, probability regression then we'll predict then that prediction will give us whether the distribution is actually normal or norm not normal so we, we run the probit one second then we'll run the predictor okay so uh, predict of the residuals r stands for the residuals or the error term now we'll see whether they are actually distributed uh, normally or not k density function is going to give us the result over here okay so here this same assume it is almost assimilating with the normal trend okay so in that case you know probit model could be applied okay if it is much deviated and more you know asymmetric then in that case you need not apply probit rather logist is more suitable okay so uh, other aspects are like you know uh, how to compare all those things like comparing logit then then probit then 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 uh, your you know uh, lpm you know together how these values which were already shown what proportion of logit coefficient is comparable to the coefficient of uh, you know uh, lpm uh, these all rest of the commands are actually going to help you because we can store all the commands together and compare their values so at this moment i am not running i i am just keeping uh, it with you i am sure that you will be enjoying in running those things and my if you are having some difficulties i'll suggest that you refer my previous nptel module that is still uh, this time it is also being floated that is on handling you know large scale uh, you know large uh, handling large scale data with stata uh, the videos are available in youtube as well okay all the videos with the title you can search and find out the details so i am not going to explain all those things those are kept for your interest so we have all explained all those things including you know a mixture of qualitative and quantitative variables uh, <coughs> logit model uh, with these commands uh, we have already di discussed i am not discussing you need to go through on your own okay i am deliberately skipping marginal effects and all their details probit uh, and their marginal effects i have already explained so no need to explain it further we, we have already run the command called predictor then we explained about k density function and what is the necessity of k density function i already discussed this is what the result looked like and i think you must have understood now how to make comparison of all those models and their parameters you know uh, these are the command we have also given uh, step by step and i'm quite sure you know with these command you can able to estimate and compare okay if you have still difficulties my videos are already floated in youtube i'm, I'm sure you can able to uh, understand very clearly at this moment i'm not repeating because you know this is simply uh you know uh, consuming time and with this less sp uh, span of time you guys can able to uh, get all those details uh then comes you know, tobit tobit model is applied when uh, we have you know um, uh, the data uh, th that that is you know having you know continuous uh, data uh, the dependent variable is continuous but those who are not you know um, following normal distribution okay or uh, not not uh, no properly um, mm, normal in the sense in you know, which it is not symmetric okay when it is not symmetric either it will be you know positively skewed or or negatively skewed that means there are some you know um, so there are some um, 
what is called uh, data at the extreme points, may be at the lower extreme, at the upper extreme. So, in that case, Tobit is taken, uh, you know, instead of OLS, if you run the OLS, you know, there since distribution is not normal, OLS is not applied. So, your expenditure is, is the variable, others, you know, we are not going to care, care, care for it. So, simply you take Tobit and run the regression, I am sure you will get the result. Okay. So, like you know some other details like uh, Tobit, censored, you know uh, how it is different, how it is truncated from the lower side or from the upper side, uh, you know you, you have to read it from my previous lecture, previous you know, module and uh, you know I am not emphasizing because we have already exceeded the time of this particular lecture. So, with this uh, I, I should stop here, I am sure you will uh, understand and apply in your day to day you know. Um, research work and develop research paper. If you have difficulties, do not hesitate and raise your queries, we will be most happy to address it. Thank you.